Hello, my name is Matthew Markwit and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Substance Painter. In this video tutorial series, I want to teach you guys the quick basics of understanding how to use Substance Painter from beginning to end. And uh, basically, I wanted to create a video that was pretty easy to understand no matter what level you were on. Uh, I noticed when I watched a lot of the other videos, including Algorithmic's own set of videos, that they were a little long-winded, and they also were getting into complex ideas that if you're kind of beginning to learn to texture and you learn Substance Painter, it's just actually kind of confusing. So they're worth watching later uh, after you've, you've gained kind of a basics understanding, get kind of a, a couple of extra things. Um, but I just wanted to create a series that gave you information and didn't assume too much either. I've seen videos that just assume too much on the end user. So this first video is called Getting Started. And I want to help you guys understand how you can get the program, uh, start a project, go through the project, and then export out your final files or textures when you're done. So the process starts, of course, by acquiring, as you can see here in my notes here, by acquiring the program itself. If you actually go to algorithmic.com, as you can see right up here, you can go down to the section that says download and buy. And under this section, you can start off with the download 30 day free trial. So you can do any of those. There's a couple different operating systems to choose from. From. You can do one of the three licenses where you actually pay for it, and depending on how much money you make will be the difference in the license. And then lastly is the educational license section. Um, if you're a teacher or a student, you can use your student ID, like a photo student ID, uh, as evidence, and they will give you a one-year renewable license uh, for the, the different programs, all of the programs, not just Painter, uh, but Designer and Bitmap to Material also. Okay, so that's up to you. So once you've gotten that, you've downloaded it, you should be able to install it, okay? And you're gonna get an independent installer, but you can actually buy and install these on Steam also. So if you have the uh, Steam program, you can use that uh, instead. Now, the next thing you wanna do, of course, in order to get something into Painter, you need to know what you need to do to your mesh before it is brought into Painter. And so over here in Max, I have this X that I found on the internet. Um, it was from a free site. Uh, our free asset site. I don't remember the original artist, otherwise I'd give them credit. Either way, I kind of retopologized it. I've unwrapped it. I've you know added material IDs. These are all the things that we're going to talk about in a moment. Okay. So the first thing you always do when you're working on your mesh before you do anything really is you optimize and clean it before you even go through the unwrap process. So even if you have already unwrapped it, you can do this afterwards. But the optimization, the way I typically do it, is I'll select the model. And I'm actually going to delete the unwrap here for a second. But you'll select the model. You'll click on the vertices. Okay. And I'll just hit Control A um, in Max anyways, and my will open up the attribute uh, editor. But either way, select all of your vertices. Okay. And then you come over to where it says Weld, and you'll click on the little setting box so on here what I'll typically do is I'll set the settings instead of uh, 0.1 I'll do like 0.01 basically what that does is if there's any vertices that when I was uh, basically making my uh, model if they didn't get welded together they will now be welded if they're exactly on top of each other so when you have something as small as 0.01 it shouldn't weld anything that's close it should only weld things that are on top of each other uh, in some cases if you have a super high poly model then you can you know do a, add an extra zero if you want uh, and so on but then you just hit check and then whatever right so you cleaned it up that way the other thing i would typically do after cleaning up the geometry that way is go over and reset the x form so you actually click on the little gear on the end here not the gear but the wrench that says utilities you click on reset X form and then click reset selected. You go back to the modify panel, you notice it has an X form on it. What that does is it kind of deletes the history or any kind of crazy wonky things that might be in the background. Uh, the same can be said with Maya. If you're exporting out of Maya, make sure that you delete the history on the object uh, before you go and uh, import it into uh, said engines or in this case, Painter. Okay, so then of course you unwrap it. So we want to make sure that the process of unwrapping is done. You'll even see that on this particular model here. I should have the unwrap, okay, and just has that one part selected. But right here is the whole thing unwrapped and packed nicely into the box. You also want to make sure that with your unwrap, you do not overlap your UVs. This is really important because when it comes to normal maps, it comes to, you know, any kind of lap maps that involve lighting like ambient occlusion. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have overlapping UVs because one part of the model will have different lighting than the other part and it's going to look real bad or it won't know what to do when it renders out the lighting if there is overlapping. So that's a key. Make sure there is no overlapping UVs. Some of the old school methods of having overlapping UVs are not as necessary when you're using Substance Painter, so it's okay to do that. Now in Max, there is a tool that helps you figure out whether there's overlapping UVs. If you go up to Select and click on Select Overlapped Polygons just in case. Uh, right now, actually in Max 2017, it features 
feature actually doesn't work it's bugged but if you have a previous version of max or a 2018 or whatever and there's, if there's a future model then yeah it might work and hopefully it does um, but either way just figure out if you have overlapping uvs fix them and get them all packed into your box so once you've done that then you have two options okay so now we've unwrapped it you have two options of setting the materials up now theoretically you don't have to do any materials and bring it in but you're going to save yourself a lot of time if you do this in your 3d program okay so you can either go and as i said two methods you can either create material ids using vertex colors or you can assign different materials to each area and this is actually going to create multiple texture sets in painter now, the difference between the two of these is that if you do this, the material ID one or the, um, the vertex colors um, and create a material ID, what you're doing is you're only creating one texture for the whole model, which is usually ideal. If, however, you want it to be separate textures, okay, or uh, completely separate textures. If I do it this way, and this actually has four separate materials on it. So if I was to open up and hit M to bring up the material editor here. And you'll even see if uh, right here's my multi-sub object. There are four materials that are all signed to this axe. I just kind of colored them. There's nothing to them other than a color. Uh, that's not important because you do all of that in the... Um uh, in Painter, but basically you pull out a standard material, you just apply it, you change the color over here, you apply it to what you want, and you name it. So each material, if you double click, come up here, you can actually name it. This is important because these names will come over as the texture texture sets in uh, Painter. So make sure you name your material, otherwise it won't know. So I have like blade, and I have handle there, and I have runes and stem. But anyways, those are the four parts. So you can do it that way, but it will actually make four separate textures for one model, or texture sets for one model, which is kind of over the top but it is a possibility the other possibility of course is just one and I call this one just axe underscore demo I assigned it to this object this object actually has the vertex colors showing so if I click on the model I have to click off this one first but if I click on this model okay right click and I go to object properties if I actually turn off the vertex channel display and you would turn it on to see it but if I turn it off momentarily you'll see it's just all one material it's just and there's nothing going on with that material it's just a basic material that's been applied I didn't do anything but name it and I assign it to the object so what you do is you let your vertex painting do the talking so what does that mean well if we come over to the either element mode or polygon mode and we start selecting certain elements or polygons right we can select a set of polygons scroll down towards the bottom here and then we can change the color so if we double click on this we can change the vertex color now default they're all going to be white this is black because I actually have a couple of different IDs selected at once if I select just some IDs which is this handle is one ID you'll see that I get a blue one here if I select some of these polys over here I'll get a green one if I select over here I'll get um, you know this pinkish color and I select these little runes I'll get a yellow color and that's how I broke all four of them down so I've went in and actually selected them doesn't matter how you select them it could be through edges it could be through polygons it could be you know through elements you know whatever just make sure that you make your selections and then come down and assign the colors and then make sure anything that's supposed to be in the same color set is literally exactly the same color because even if it's just slightly off it will be considered a different material id so make sure everything so say i want a couple of things selected like you know whatever just these two runes i want both of those in the same material id i'll just come down here with a vertex color click on that and give it a color now there is a vertex coloring tool that you can use in max but this is this makes i mean just doing this is fairly easy uh, if you want to learn it you can go and research that yourself later okay so once you've done that as i said before if i go back to the top of the model if you want to see it make sure that the uh, the vertex painting is working just go to object properties click on vertex channel display hit okay and then you'll see those colors that i created right actually i separated that one out too to be yellow but those were the different things that i thought when i was going to actually texture the x that i wanted as separate materials all right, so as I said before, this will save you a lot of heartache if you do it, and then whatever you name your material in the material editor will be the name of the texture sets once you get into um, Painter. Now, the last thing you want to do before you export is you want to set the pivot point. Uh, this is so, like, it, the way it rotates around the model, but it's also um, how the symmetry tool works. So there's this tool where you can set a symmetry plane and it will mirror on both sides. So you can paint one detail and have it mirrored on the other side of the geometry. But this is dependent on where the pivot point is. So if you are in Max, you go to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot Only, and click on Center. To, you can center it to the object, or you can just manually move it. I mean, we can come in here and manually move it and put it wherever we want. Right, so, whoops, I clicked off of it there. Um, but uh, you come over and put it wherever you want. Um, that will serve as the basically the symmetry point. So make sure 
sure that your uh, pivot is where you want. I'll just click off of effect pivot only, and now we're good. So now we can export it. Now, because I have a couple things in the scene, I like to do this anyways. When I go to export, I'll click on the max uh, button right there, go to export the little arrow, and pick export selected so that we're not doing both of them. I'm just going to export this out as new. I've already done this before, but we'll see right there. We'll hit save and then hit yes. So I'm going to write over it. You're going to get this um, dialog box. Don't worry about it. Just hit OK, and you should be done. So now we're pretty good. Now we can take our model into Substance Painter. So let's do that. Let's jump into Substance Painter and start a new project. Now, first things first, when Substance Painter opens up, it looks like this. Uh, you can look at any of this stuff if you want. Start playing around with it. Click on this and not display it again, whatever. I'm just going to shut it off here. Uh, also, when you first load up Painter, it actually tends to look like this. I don't know why the, the very first time, only the very first time, um, but you'll see that it actually has like these collapsed views. So you're 3D and your 2D viewer collapse. You just come up here and then pull this down and then you'll be fine. That's really all you need to do. Okay, uh, to bring in a new file, we just go up to file and we go to new and it's going to give up this dialog box here that says new project. You choose your template. So your template could be if you know you're going to export it out to a Unity 5 or Unreal 4 engine, you can choose those. If you're just going to do a normal workflow, any of these kind of workflows, you go ahead. If you know what you want, pick it. I'm just going to click on Unreal Engine 4. Then you want to pick your mesh. So we're going to click on select. I'm going to click on new, which is the mesh I just exported. I'm going to hit open here. Okay, so now that mesh is set up. Now the rest of this stuff is usually dependent on uh, which uh, choice you made up here. Um, but you can, in some cases, change the OpenGL or DirectX uh, with this without uh, any problems. Um, and this is also your document size. So I leave the default 2048. Um, I like to work double size anyway, so if I'm going to do 1024 textures or any of these power of two textures, um, I'm going to want to make sure uh, that I'm double size, uh, which would be 2048, because when you shrink down detail, it actually looks better uh, than trying to paint it all at the 1024 uh, range. And actually, there's another reason this was, was helpful. When I was working on the Pixar's Cars video game back on PlayStation 2, I made all my textures double size, shrunk them down for a game. Then Microsoft asked us after the game shipped to make a port for the Xbox 360, so a, you know, a version of of a system that was higher than the last system and so because we had upscaled uh, textures all I had to do was open up the original textures save them out and everything was great so there's lots of reasons to kind of double size your textures but this is just one of them by the way you can change them after the fact either way but I just start off with that now you just hit OK and you should then have your model show up so we'll have the axe over here in our 3d view and our 2d texture view I'm going to cover the interface in the next video um, but for now, let's talk about the other methods that you would do, of course, as you're going through the particular pipeline. So now that you got the model in, the next thing you need to do is you need to bake your textures. So under texture set settings, as we see over here, there's a bunch of different options. We can click on the bake textures button. So the bake textures button will open up this dialog box. In here, we can then choose any of the types of maps we want. Um, I usually just leave them all because some of them are dependent on, or the tools down here and filters and other things and masks are actually dependent on whether these maps have been baked out. Now, if you had already baked them in initially, I didn't say this um, when I first imported it, but when you first import your files, uh, your mesh, you can actually add extra textures too. We didn't have any, but you can add them to the initial thing and then I'll put them in the appropriate slots down here, or you can bake them once you get in here. So you can choose the output size, Okay, you can choose uh, whether you want to just use the low poly mesh as the high poly mesh, and I'll just click on that because I don't have a high poly mesh. If you do have a high poly mesh, then just click on this and then find said mesh, right, and go and use that. Okay, there's a lot of other features in here, but I'm not going to talk about them. If you want to learn more, go ahead and research that because usually the defaults are fine. Now, you also want to make sure when you're clicking on these, there are actually settings on each one of these textures, uh, especially for the ID. If you made the ID using the vertex color method, make sure that color source is set to vertex color. It can be something else. I think the default is set to vertex color, so you should be fine. But either way, just double check that. Okay, so once you have all of that done, just hit bake. Now, keep in mind, if you happen to have multiple texture sets, and you can see right here where it says Axe Demo, this is what I named my material in Max. If I brought the other one in that had the four materials, it would have four different texture sets all name those different things like um, you know blade and handle and so on down here it would say like do you want to export out just that texture set or all of them so you'd have that option if you have multiple texture sets since we don't have multiple it just gives us the one so I'll hit bake and then it will bake all of those textures for us including the material ID which should all the stuff should then pop up here if you happen to have your own textures or you want to change them you just change them over here these are the textures assigned to the said model and you'll see they automatically be assigned once the model has been baked okay so that's kind of how that works and we can change those if needed later 
All right, so those are some of the basics there. So like I said, we'd bake the initial textures. Then you'll go and you actually paint your texture, right? So this is the process that all my other videos coming up will teach you how to do. So we're not going to talk about that. Um, but once you've baked your textures and all that stuff's in there, then you're going to want to save it. So uh, save the file is pretty simple, just like any other program. We just go file uh, and then we go to save or save as. Okay, they should name it whatever you want, and they are SPP files. Now, this works the same if you go to open a file. They will also be an SPP file, okay, or a Substance Painter project file, okay? Um, then, once you have all of that done, so now that you've saved your scene and you've gotten all the other work done, the very last thing you need to do, according to this list here, too, is export your final textures, which is pretty simple, which is also file. We go to file, export textures, and in here, there's the, diff the different things that, that kind of pay attention to is, one, where do you want the place to be uh, saved? So, in this case, um, I'm actually going to change the file location to the painter folder and export folder on my desktop. Okay, what file format do you want? I'm going to choose uh, Targa because I tend to like Targa. So it's up to you how you guys want to choose, but you get all those different file formats. Uh, right here is the config. So what is it going to be exported out for? Which engine um, and or, or something else? Uh, a lot of the if the, the basic uh, template you chose in the beginning will affect this. That's why it was defaulted to Unreal Engine 4. Okay, and then there's some other stuff. But right here, if you have multiple texture sets, you can include them or just choose one. And then configuration, even though I won't show you how this works, um, it's basically just a place that lets you kind of use naming conventions. So you can change your naming conventions to whatever you want. There's a bunch of them. There's some that are default to certain engines, you know, whatever. So you can play around with that, learn more later. Um, but you get the idea. So we go back to export, hit export. And um, it's either going to ask you to see the logs, which is if I just click over there, I can see the log or just open up the folder. I'm just going to hit OK, and I can open my folder anyways, which is over here. And you see there's the three textures that I just made, the base, the normal, and the occlusion roughness metallic. Even though there's nothing that's been done to this, so these should all be blank, uh, you get the idea. And that's how that works. So that's the entire process of getting a model ready, bringing it into the program, and then exporting it out when you're done. All the processes in order to actually paint the textures I will show in the other videos. So hopefully you guys learned in this video and I will see you guys in the next one.